This is the Bridge Pro, an iPad Bluetooth keyboard. Should you get it? No. Why? Because the keys are just terrible to use. It's basically the equivalent of trying to cut steak with a dull butter knife. If that wasn't a good enough reason for you not to get this product, there are certain design features that just really doesn't make your iPad feel like a laptop at all. Also, something looks like it's been bent, doesn't it? Now for the rest of this video, I'm gonna step through the design of this product, the functionality and versatility it may or may not offer your iPad, and then touch on the protection a bit. And as I'm doing that, I will also compare it against some of the other keyboards that I do have for the iPad. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty decided to start doing keyboard reviews, which meant I had to go spend a lot of money and buy a ton of them. Use them and figure out how some companies are still in business. Because products like the Bridge that get endorsements from these large tech websites, it has to be good, right? Like those are stellar reviews. But honestly, in what world can an iPad be like a MacBook without a trackpad? Installing your iPad with the Bridge Pro is done by strong arming your device into tiny hinges. There's no guide to help you align the keyboard and the iPad edges together, so you end up having to match the edges by exerting a decent amount of force on the iPad. The hinges have a fairly thick rubber insert that comes off way too easily, but is flexible enough to handle a screen protector. So we're at the end of filming this review and we've put the, uh, the case through quite a bit of a wear and tear. I'm not so sure about the screen protector anymore. It fits, but like this corner is now completely mangled and has made this product almost unusable. So I'm gonna go see if I can get a replacement part from Bridge, because we didn't, like, we used it, but I didn't think that the corners would just get absolutely destroyed. Like this is, I'm not putting my iPad in that, that's metal. Yeesh. As a side note, the hinge on the Bridge Pro are smaller than the hinges on the Pro Plus. I don't know why. I will note that the hinge will press into the iPad screen a tiny bit if you use a screen protector. There's a bit of warping, as you can see. Now, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but I wouldn't be doing my job as a reviewer if I didn't mention it. Now, after you install the iPad, you will notice that it looks like either your iPad is bent or your keyboard is. Honestly, I think it's just an optical illusion because the gap between the side with no hinge and the other side isn't the same. But still, every single time I use this product, I think something is bent or is bending, and it's a very uneasy feeling, we'll say. The chassis of this keyboard is made from aluminum, so it looks kind of nice, and it has kind of a matte finish to it, but the matte finish isn't as fine as the iPad, so it doesn't match it 100%. Now, Bridge includes a magnetic cover for the back, and in general, I like the idea of the cover, but it makes the entire keyboard setup even more top-heavy. And this hinge, uh, doesn't take into account the weight of the uh, magnetic key, magnetic back for some odd reason. There are rubber nubs below the keyboard that prevent the screen from rubbing against the keys and the rubber nubs on the hinge also provide enough friction to stop the keyboard and iPad from moving around too much. The keyboard with the iPad folded down is quite stable and won't slide around easily because of the large giant nubs on the bottom of the keyboard. Now, if you're still planning on getting this product, consider getting it through my uh, Amazon links. This channel's not sponsored, so everything that you see here was not paid for by Bridge. Not one bit. So help me out by getting your stuff through my Amazon links. Now, stability of this product is great when it's closed up, but when it's open up, well, that's a different story. Here's my biggest issue with this product. The case by itself weighs 704 grams. The iPad with the Apple Pencil weighs about 718. So the entire setup is gonna to be top heavy. Now that top heaviness isn't going to be that noticeable on a flat surface, but if you're gonna treat this entire setup like a laptop, you will notice how unstable it feels. On a laptop, all the bulk and weight is under your hands. It's the complete opposite with the Bridge Pro and the iPad. Now Apple circumvents this by changing the center of gravity. So the center of gravity isn't out here. Center of gravity is closer to the edge of the uh, keyboard. So it's not as unstable when compared to something like the Bridge Pro. You have less of that pendular motion when you're like swinging your iPad around. Whereas in, on the uh, Apple one, you don't have that swinging action. Now to make the entire top heaviness even worse, if you use the magnetic cover that comes with this product, this weighs 180 grams. So everything just kind of just sits on the top like that poor hinge now as a side note I purchased this product back in March and they still haven't sent me the uh Magnetic cover for the 2020 iPad. It's somewhere in transit, but that's why you're seeing the 2018 version from a protection standpoint The magnetic back cover is going to definitely help against back scratches and the keyboard itself isn't going to offer much protection in terms of drops So let's take a closer look at the actual keys and you know notice that there is no trackpad here The Pro Plus has a trackpad. So how is this even a full laptop replacement 95 Mac? That doesn't even make any sense. There's no trackpad. Honestly, what modern-day laptop doesn't have a trackpad? 
the only ones that I can think of were the original IBM ThinkPads that just had the stupid nub and the two buttons at the bottom. But all the other laptops nowadays have trackpads. And honestly, has anybody at 9to5Mac tried using an iPad with an external monitor? It's just so bad. It's not a laptop replacement. Now the Bridge Pro can connect to your device via Bluetooth 4.1 or through USB-C. That's right. If the 12 month battery dies, you just plug the keyboard right into the iPad and it, it still works. Smart. The keys are backlit with three levels, so it'll be great for all the finger pointing typists who do work in the dark. There is a full row of shortcut keys above the numbers, which include a home button, lock button, backlit button, screen brightness, on-screen keyboard, music controls, volume controls, battery button, a Bluetooth button, and then the power button. The most useful of the group is going to be the battery button. I kid. It's the home button. Top left corner, really useful. The least useful is actually the Bluetooth and the power buttons. Nothing like having something you're going to press once or twice a year have its own set of buttons. How much battery power do you want to find out you have? You hold it down for four seconds and you stare at the number of different colored flashes. It's like reading the error codes on your uh, furnace. And if you're looking for Siri, she's in the bottom left corner. Now the keys themselves are smaller than the average full-size keyboard. I measure them at about 15.3 millimeters, which is smaller than the Magic Keyboard by a full millimeter and about half a millimeter smaller than your typical Apple keyboard. The distance between the keys is the same. So how about the typing experience? Overall, it's very, very tough to type. I, I found myself making way more typing errors with this keyboard than any other keyboard that I've used in the last while. And I credit my poor typing skills with this product due to the fact that the buttons are quite hard to press. You really have to hammer at them to get all the stupid words out of your brain through your fingers into the iPad. Sorry, puppy. And when you do make mistakes, you want to fix them, you have to tap the screen because there's no trackpad, and then that hinge just kind of does this. It's very, very annoying. The only other time that I felt my keys were this tough was when I spilled beer on my Logitech T15 gaming keyboard while playing WoW like 10 years ago. Now part of me really hopes that this is specific to my unit because the Bridge Pro Plus that I have has buttons that are nearly as tough as this regular Pro. But this is the product that I have and that's the reason why I say nay to this keyboard. What's the point of a keyboard? <laughs> what's, honestly, what's the point of a keyboard product if it's tough to type? I kind of put in the same league as all these companies that, you know, trying to do good socially, but they're selling a bad product. You know, not very useful product. But we donate so much to, to charity, but it's a bad product. The last thing I will mention is the magnetic back. I like the idea of it because it flattens out the entire back of the iPad so you want to draw, you can painfully yank the iPad out of the keyboard case and just start doodling. The back is thick enough that your camera won't be touching whatever flat surface you're writing on. So it's all smooth. There's no rickety ricky unevenness when you're going tap 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 schmear with your Apple Pencil. Honestly, if you're planning on getting a bridge product, spend the extra cash and get the Bridge Pro. It is mildly better mostly because it has trackpad and the keys seem to work a little better. But if you want just a keyboard and don't want the trackpad, you might as well just go with a regular keyboard. Honestly, the Apple keyboard is 100 bucks, which is 50 bucks cheaper than the Bridge Pro. Or you can even go even cheaper and just buy like an Anchor one for 25 bucks. It gets you the same functionality and less annoyance when you're trying to like then dangle your iPad into this product. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. The next uh, keyboard product I will be reviewing will be the Zag one. I'm not quite fully uh, convinced about my review on the Bridge Pro Plus, still using that product. But I have used the Zag one quite a bit, so that one's coming up for the uh, keyboards. If you know what I think the difference are between the Smart Keyboard and the Magic Keyboard, got a full-on video for that one, so do check that one out in that playlist. First time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, producing content a lot lately these days, once a day uh, for the last while transitioning out of the isolation video series and then to the holy crap how many videos can I do consecutively <laughs> video series. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. So terrible. Really? First video of the day and you're, uh, you're done?